What are some positional battles for Maryland football team this year? We'll talk about it on Locked on Terps. You are Locked on Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, co-host of Locked on Terps, joined by Zach Curlander, my other co-host of Locked on Terps, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making us part of your day. And today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dog stretch khaki shorts are made to look good. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on college to enter a promo code and locked on college for a free white tech hat with your order. All right, so today we're going to be talking about some camp battles, and let's start with the wide receiver room. Um, If you look at, I think it'll be a competition between six guys, Tyrese Chambers, Caden Prather, Jason Jones, Ty Felton, Octavian Smith, and Shalik Knox. I think we'll all compete for playing time, but who do you think will be the number one wide receiver this year? Yeah, I definitely think it could be a competition between Jason Jones and Caden Prather, but I think I'm going to go with Jay Sean Jones. Uh, he led the team in receptions last year with 44. He had 557 yards, four touchdowns. He averaged about 13 yards per catch. But the thing that intrigued me the most was his games towards the end of the season. Um, he had 13 receptions for 231 yards in the last two games with the touchdown. Those games were against Rutgers and NC State. So I think he came off like the end of the year last year, he was definitely playing a lot better. He was getting more reps because obviously Demas and Jarrett didn't play in the last game of the season. But if I had to take a guess going into the season, it'd be Jay Sean Jones, especially with his versatility to play the outside and the inside. But I think the better question is maybe for the competition between the number two and number three. What do you think? Yeah, just to add on to your Jason Jones statement, I think he stepped up last year. I don't think the Terp staff knew how good he was yet. And coming off of the two ACL injuries that he had prior to going having a really good year last year. So I think he stepped up at the end of the year, especially when guys were gone in the bowl game, like you said, against NC State, when Rakeem Jarrett and Demas and Copeland were gone. But throughout the whole year, he had a really good year. But as the number two wide receiver, I think it would be Caden Prather, 6'4", from West Virginia, a transfer, um, Coach Loxley recruited him out of high school, so he wanted him all along. So maintaining that really good relationship um, is a really important because you never know when a recruit can come back and enter the transfer portal, and all of a sudden you're back in it for that guy. And that's what happened with Caden Prather. And last year he had 52 receptions for 501 yards, and it was kind of a breakout season in a way for him. He was a four-star out of high school, but I think he can challenge Jason Jones for the number one wide receiver on Maryland. He's going to play the outside. I like that combination. They're two different players, Um, but he has prototypical size at 6'4", and I think he will be a huge jump for the Maryland wide receiver core. Yeah, just to add on to what you said about Caden Prather, I think he gives something Maryland hasn't had in a really long time, just a big jump ball receiver. I mean, you could throw the ball up, and he should come down with it with his prototypical size. So, I'm excited. Like you said, we tried to get him out of high school. Unfortunately, he chose West Virginia. So we've wanted him. And Loxley, it seems like he has a good idea of what he's going to bring into this offense. So I'm really excited to see what he does for us. Yeah, Dante Demas gave us a little bit of that jump ball ability. But Caden Prather can move better than Dante Demas. He can run better routes. He's a better overall athlete, I think, than Dante Demas. And Dante Demas is in the NFL in the Ravens camp. So – Um, I do think that's kind of the expectation for me for Caden Prather. I think he can challenge Jason Jones. And then if you move along, I think the real question is who's the third wide receiver. If you look at Tyrese Chambers, who was a transfer, um, he's had, he's put up a couple really good seasons for different schools at sacred heart. He had 50 catches for 811 yards in 2019, also with eight touchdowns. And then, For FIU, he has their receiving record at about 1,000 yards. So he's a really interesting guy. If you watch him in the spring game, and I've heard he's had a pretty good fall camp too, but if you watch him in the spring game, he had two touchdowns and had a really good early connection with Talia. I think he's a guy that just gets open. But if you watch him, he's super excited to be part of the Maryland team. That's all he talked about on the broadcast on the Big Ten Network, how this was a dream come true from the play. So I think he'll be competing with – 
Octavian Smith, Ty Felton, and Shalik Knox all for that number three spot. Um, but who do you think can grab the number three spot? Who's your favorite early on? I'd definitely say Tyrese Chambers. Like you said, you listed some of the stats. He's a very good playmaker with the ball in his hands as well. Like, he'll avoid tackles. But like you said, in the past, we've had injuries in the receiving core. So I hopefully that doesn't happen this year. But, I mean, that can be expected. So, like, guys like Octavian Smith and Ty Fellon are also going to have to be ready just in case either Chambers, Prather, or Jones get injured. And I think they're more than capable. They both came on at the end of the year last year in a bowl game. They're both explosive playmakers. They're screen type of players. You get the ball in their hands, good things will happen. So I'm excited to see them this year, and I think they have to be ready. I think all the guys in the receiving room should be ready because, like you said, injuries do happen, and we just need to ex- just be ready, everyone. Everyone needs to be ready to play. Yeah, and Coach Loxley and the offensive staff loves to rotate guys in. So – Yes, there will be three guys that start, per se, but he's going to really get all these guys in. Definitely. Octavian Smith and Shalik Knotts were both freshmen last year. Um, Octavian Smith played a good amount for his freshman. He's a really fast guy. He's quick. He's not the tallest guy, but that's what will kind of bring to you. Um, he's an all-around guy. You can, get him in the, um, you can get him in the screen game. He's a deep threat. There was a post of him on IG – making a really good catch on a deep throw from yeah. Talia in fall camp. So he might just be too talented not to play. He was a four-star out of high school. But also was Shalik Knotts was a four-star out of high school and was a freshman last year. Um, Octavian Smith played more than Shalik Knotts. But um, Shalik Knotts could also challenge. I'm curious about how much better he's gotten this fall. Um, he's kind of the opposite of Octavian Smith. He's kind of like Caden Prather in a way. He's a taller guy, 6'2", 6'3", go up and get it, guy. So we got diverse bodies in there. But you could argue that Ty Felton is most talented out of all of them, and we've been waiting for Ty Felton to come on for a while. And he did at the end of the last year in the bowl game, similar to Jayshon Jones and Octavian Smith when Rakeem and Copeland were all gone. Um, But Ty Felton's a really talented guy. I think he could be an X factor. If anyone goes down in this wide receiver room, though, like you said, I will not be concerned at all because Ty Felton, Octavian Smith are all really good players, and I think they will challenge Tyrese Chambers to play. But who will win that wide receiver three spot? I don't know. I think Tyrese Chambers could be the early favorite, but I don't really expect there to be much of a snap difference between those three guys. I think Shalik Knotts is kind of going to be uh, have the least amount of snaps. But between Octavian Smith, Ty Fellon, and Tyree Chambers, I expect them all to have about equal snaps. Um, and we'll just see how the year goes. I hope – part of me kind of hopes Coach Loxley doesn't rotate them as much. I want him to find the best three or four guys that fits the best with, with Talia, who has the best connection with him, and play those guys, especially when we play the bigger programs. But early on, it's going to be good um, against Towson, against Charlotte, um, to see who kind of comes on early – and who doesn't in a way. So I think that's great about the early schedule. We don't play anyone too good until we play Virginia. So there's time to develop throughout fall camp. They'll see what happens. But that's what I would say about that. And that's going to lead us into our first break. After this, we're going to talk about a little bit more position battles. We'll give you some Terps that are on some award lists. And some CBS rankings came out for this year and another ranking I want to talk about in the top 25. So all that and more after this break and ad from FanDuel. Football season is about to kick off and FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all season long. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl and you'll get a bonus bet for every victory. You can use your bonus bets on spreads, player props, over and unders, and more. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sports book. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Take you some time to visit FanDuel. It's a really great place to put in your bets. All right. So now that we're back, I want to talk about a little bit more of the position battles that we didn't get to before the first break um, between the second running back. Um, clearly, Roman Hemby's the number one, but who do you think, Zach, 
can be the number two? That's tough. Obviously, like you said, we have Roman Hemby, so hopefully we won't need the RB2 very much because Hemby is just a workhorse, but it's close. It's definitely between Antoine Littleton or Ramon Brown. I like Littleton a little bit more. He was the second back last year. You know, he provided a little bit of spark. Kind of reminded me of Justice Hill a little bit on the Ravens. Just a guy to get in there. He's explosive. He can catch the ball. I like him a lot. Roman Brown is also good, but he didn't get many opportunities last year compared to Littleton. So I don't see why there'd be a reason to change from Littleton to Brown unless Littleton's been playing worse in the fall as Brown. But as of right now, obviously Hemby won, and then I'd lean toward um, Antoine Littleton. What do you think? Yeah, I mean – they're really different. Antoine Littleton's a huge back, short yardage guy, um, but also has a lot of speed too. Um, Roman Raymond Brown is closer to Roman Hemby in a ways. The Roman Raymond thing kind of throws you yeah, off. Yeah, but <laughs> Raymond is a smaller guy. He was a four-star out of high school, but they say that he's actually faster than Roman Hemby and provides more wiggle, if you will and better movement, which is surprising because you know how much Hemby, how well he moves. So I think that at the end of the day, Antoine Littleton complements Roman Hemby better um, yeah. because he can get the short yardage and give Hemby breaks in ways. But I think Raymond Brown will rotate in a lot too this year. He's too good not to play. And I think that's part of the reason why Coach Loxley, and you see a lot of other programs do this, they like to play a lot of guys because of the transfer portal. You don't want to just play your best back. Obviously, the running back is not the best example because you want to keep those guys fresh anyway. Yeah. And in terms of like wide receivers, you're not going to just play three wide receivers, especially when you know you're going to win the game. You're going to rotate a lot of guys in because you want to keep as many guys as you can in today's college football with the transfer portal, and I think that's what kind of happens – with the running back room. Yeah, I think we're in a good position where we have a lot of tools on offense. Like you said, we talked about earlier, the receiving room is definitely deep. We have six guys. I think four or five of them could easily play. And now going to the running back room, I think if Hemby goes down, I'd be confident in Brown or Littleton, any of them. They can provide two different styles of running backs. So I think we're in a good position with the running back room. I just hope Hemby, you know, improves from last year, obviously. He was a stud last year. Hopefully, he just gets better and better and better. But I like where we're at. What do you think about Billy Edwards coming in? Yeah, I think they could put in a package for Billy Edwards. Um, uh, similar to a Taysom Hill type of thing, if you will. Yeah. But Billy Edwards can throw the ball pretty well. But I can see him coming in in the red zone opportunities, third and ones to provide read option. I mean, Talia can run the ball. But he's not the athlete that Billy Edwards is. So I can see them putting in a package for Billy. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're doing that this year in um, fall camp. I bet they are. Um, or like a quarterback draw. Just simple quarterback plays that keeps the offense on the toes. I doubt they show it early on in the season. Maybe they do to make the Ohio State's and Michigan's prepare for it and yeah. waste time so they can't prepare on other things. Or maybe they wait to bring it out for the Ohio State in the Michigan game, but I wouldn't be surprised to see Billy Edwards in there, maybe just one or two snaps, maybe a whole series, just to provide a different look to the defense. I mean, he is expected to be the starter next year, um, but I can see that happening. But why would you want to also take Talia out? He's one of the best. He is the best Maryland quarterback of all time. So it's kind of a tough challenge to um, yeah. decide on. But Just to add on a little think, bit, I think, um, yeah, I think they could use him actually as a decoy. I mean, they don't really need him to run the ball. If they put him on the outside or they put him on a running back, it kind of throws defenses off and it can spread them out a little bit. If you put him on the outside, it just – I think the defense could be in a little bit of confusion because they wouldn't be expecting it or seeing it. So it could add, add an element to this offense that we really haven't had in the past couple of years, just an element of surprise and just see how it works. But like you said, you don't want to take Talia out at all. So hopefully – Maybe we see some creativity with that, but I'm not really, you know, banking on it. But we'll see what happens. Yeah, for sure. And I wanted to get to some of the award lists, some big award watch lists that some of the Terps have been added to. Um, Jay Sean Barham, 
the standout linebacker, just got added to the Buckkiss Award watch list, which is the best linebacker in the country. Yeah, he deserves to be on it, especially after last year. He had a great season last year. Maryland needs him to be better this year. Like we said a couple episodes ago, our running defense has really struggled. I'm not going to blame the linebacking core at all. It's more of the defensive line, but we need a guy who can go into those gaps, stop them, wrap them up, tackle them. I think he's definitely primed for an even better season this year, and he definitely deserves to be on that award list. Yeah, I'm just going to touch on Jay Sean Barham. I'm not going to talk about too much, but at the end of the day, I think he has a chance to be one of the best Maryland linebackers ever. I think that's on track of what he's going to do. He was one of Coach Loxley's highest-rated recruits. He was, I think he was ranked like 180 in the country, high four star. Everybody in the country wanted him. And if he were to transfer, I'm sure he would get an offer from just about everywhere. But he's got the speed and athleticism to be a first two round guy pick in the NFL draft. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now a first two round guy. I'm wow. not going to say first round, but maybe. Second Maybe. round, but he definitely is a talent. If he produces another year and builds on last year, he has the talent to go in the first three to two rounds of the NFL draft. And then Talia was added to the Davy O'Brien Award watch list, which is the best quarterback in the country. Um, and there was 35 QBs on this list. Yeah, it's kind of cool that Talia is getting some recognition around the league. So it's awesome to see him on that list. We've said it before. He's got all the tools He's probably the best quarterback in the Big Ten. Maybe you can make an argument for J.J. McCarthy, but I think Talia just has a better skill set as of right now. So he definitely deserves to be on that list. I think he has a chance to even win Big Ten Player of the Year. So I'm excited. He definitely has a chance. There are a lot of good quarterbacks in the country, but he's definitely a top five, top ten quarterback in my eyes. Yeah, I would say he is the best quarterback right now with maybe the highest IQ Best is different from most talented. You could argue other guys are more talented than him right now, have bigger arms, yeah. have better legs like J.J. McCarthy, like Drew Aller, and others. But in terms of best and production on the field so far, you could definitely say that Talia is there. And then getting to Roman Hemby, who we talked about earlier, he got awarded to the Dalk Walker Award watch list, which yeah. is the best running back in the country and – I love seeing all these Terps on award watch list. It shows where we are as a program to have your quarterback and your linebacker, two of the most important positions on both sides of the ball, um, two leaders. Um, A lot of people say the linebacker position is like the quarterback position on defense to have two of those guys that are going to be your signal callers to be on award watch list is really exciting. And then your running back to be on there. It's great. Yeah, that's awesome. It's unfortunate because of the running back situation in the NFL. I think Roman Hemby is going to be a stud and will eventually make it to the NFL. But it's definitely cool to see recognition, like you said, for all these turfs. Like we're an up and coming team and seeing guys like Barham, Talia and Hemby be on these awards lists is kind of it's awesome to see because I haven't seen it in a really long time. This award, this running back award isn't a joke. Like Bijan won it last year, like Najee, Kenneth Walker. I've also wanted so seeing him on that means that people see him as an honestly one of the best running backs in the country. He's only a red shirt sophomore, so he's going to be here for probably two more seasons. He's only going to get better, and I'm really excited for him to just take over this offense this year. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. Um, we talked about was he underrated, and he is yeah. underrated. I still think. Definitely. But clearly he's getting recognition if he's on the Doc Walker Award top running back list. And I hope he is able to win it. Doubt he can. There's just too many good backs, especially in the Big Ten specifically. All the best um, running backs in the country that everyone talks about are all in the Big Ten, whether it's Corum, Singleton, Allen, yeah. and others. The Big Ten has all the best backs. But still great to see Roman Hemby there. And I, have, I, I, have, to- I have a question really quick, Trey, for you about the running back situation. Just to go off topic a little bit, what do you think about the running back situation going on in the NFL? Um, well, I honestly think that it's the right way that the GMs and owners are handling it. Um, I wouldn't pay a running back. It's yeah. just not as valuable in the NFL. But in college, it's a completely different thing. College yeah, running backs can completely change your team. But in the NFL, 
it's just not what it is. It's co- it's quarterback driven. But in yeah. college football, there's not as many good quarterbacks. So um, the, the running back is really important, and it's really important to be able to run the ball. And some running backs are just so freakishly talented in college compared to other guys that they can create offense with bad offensive lines. And I think that's what Roman Hemby can do in ways. But um, NFL running backs, the defense is just too good. If you don't have a good offensive line, you're probably not going to be amazing. That's just is what it is. The mm-hmm. offensive line creates holes. They are what um, makes the running back good, to be honest, in my opinion. But that's what I would say about that. Yeah. And then I wanted to talk about the rankings that have came out over the last couple of days. And CBS actually had Maryland as the 33rd ranked team in the country. What do you think about that, Zach? That's pretty good. I like it a lot better than ESPN's. I thought ESPN's was pretty disrespectful. I think, what did they have us at, 45 or something? Yeah, the coaches pull. Not oh, ESPN. the coaches pull, sorry. Yeah, coaches, coaches pull. pull had us at 45. Yeah, that was crazy. They had NC State over us, and they had Minnesota, right? Yeah, which yeah. I think we're both better than both of those teams. But the preseason ranks don't matter oh, a yeah. ton. Um, it really just comes down to – how it actually happens in the season. As soon as week one hits and week two and week three, then I expect Maryland to start climbing up the ring, especially with their early Hopefully. season schedule. And then Brandon Marcello, 247 analyst, had Maryland in the top 25 at yeah. 24. So that that's getting us our respect. Do you have any thoughts about that, though, overall? Like you said, I feel like it's a common theme. It doesn't – preseason rankings, yeah, they're cool and all, but we're at the point where we're kind of used to not being in the top 25 in preseason rankings. I kind of like us being underdogs going into the season because there hasn't even been a game played and rankings – everyone's rank should be ranked the same. Obviously, like, that's not true, but no one's played any games. No one has any wins. No one has any losses. So, Maryland can easily come into the season as, like you said, the 33rd, the 24th, the 45th ranked team in the country, and if they put – good wins together they could easily just skyrocket into the top 25 so i like to see some recognition with that but i'm really not worried about our rankings at all what do you think about all that yeah no i'm not worried about it at all i think you said it perfectly i think we'll climb up and eventually we're gonna reach a program that is top 25 consistently i think that's what we're doing over the next couple years with recruiting with the five four stars in the 2024 class so far which is going to continue to build Um, But that's a topic for another day. We got to keep on moving. We're running a little bit long. And we're going to talk. We're going to touch on some Maryland basketball after this short break. All right. So the Maryland basketball team just finished up their Rome trip. But the final piece of the conference out of conference schedule is out and the bracket is for the four team Asheville championship and Maryland will play Davidson in its second game of the season and the first game of that tournament on November 10th. Yeah, I'm excited. It should be a good game. Davidson did lose their two leading scorers from last year. So hopefully Maryland won't have many issues with that team. I have very high expectations for Maryland. I would hope that we can beat a team like Davidson, but We also are going to have to play the winner of Clemson and UAB. So what do you think about those intriguing matchups? Yeah, I think Clemson will win that. I'm not really familiar much with UAB, but Clemson had a better year last year in terms of college basketball. But I would like to see Clemson because I think that can give us some really good experience before the Villanova game, which is right after this. Oh, boy. And where we go, Akeem Hart plays us again, the Maryland transfer who – transfer to Villanova and Villanova they always are well coached and they always play good defense and have really good offense and I think it's important especially for our freshmen and just overall mesh of the team and coach Kevin Willard to figure out how he wants to do things what plays are working um, what lineup is working I think it's important for us to play a team like Clemson and a little Big Ten ACC challenge to start the year but first we would have to take care of Davidson, because I'd be pretty disappointed if we're playing in a um, third slash fourth place game instead of the championship game of that tournament. Um, 
But yeah, what would do you have any other thoughts about that? Yeah, it, it's pretty. It's gonna be pretty disappointing to see Hakeem Hart in a different uniform. I really wish he came back this year. I think if he came back, we could have easily been a top fifteen team, top ten team. He had a great year last year. I love him. Sounds like I don't love him, but he was awesome for us. I'm excited to see what he can do at Villanova, but it just sucks that he's not at Maryland anymore. Well, he's from Philly, so I have no problems with him going to Villanova. He also had offers, I think, from Kansas, too, and some other big schools. Yeah, a lot of places wanted to keep Hart, which it didn't surprise me because no. of the way he kind of came on. But he developed, man. If you look yeah. back at towards his, like, freshman year, like, he didn't really play sophomore year, like, same type of thing. Like, he – he really developed into a player, so I felt like he was the heart and soul of our team recently. Towards the end of the year last year, he was super consistent, which I really like about him. He always was good from the corner. He could drive. He could play. He's always yeah. playing good defense. He's hustling all the time. He plays with passion and energy. He's going to be great at Villanova, and I'm really, I'm excited for him. Like you said, he wasn't that heavily recruited. So Maryland got lucky. We got him. He didn't really play that much freshman year. He played a little bit, but you know. To see him go to Villanova and get recognition and offers from other schools is definitely exciting, and I hope nothing but the best for him. Yeah, and today is actually Deshaun Harris Smith's birthday, so happy birthday, Deshaun happy birthday. Harris Smith, one of the best um, recruits in recent history for Maryland basketball, highly rated four star guy. We expect to be really good, so happy birthday to him. I had to add that yeah. on, um, and just to touch up on a couple things before we end. After the Villanova game, it's a bunch of easy games, like very easy games that Maryland should handle yeah. pretty easily, which I don't know how I feel about it, the schedule. And then we go into UCLA, which is going to be a hard game, but they lost their best player in Jamie Vacas and their point guard from point guard, shooting guard, hybrid um, Amari Bailey. So that's going to be a really good game. I think we can beat them, though. They're not going to be as good. They're not going to be as experienced from last year. We got smoked last year by them, by the way. I'm pretty yeah. sure. I'm pretty sure we got absolutely obliterated by them. So hopefully we put a better performance in that. Because yeah, even if was... we lose, even if we lose to Villanova, um, which I hope we don't, but oh, yeah, that'd be a huge <laughs> our, win. Our, our record should still be really good. I'm yeah. um, heading into the UCLA game. So those are the couple really big out of conference games as the schedule has become more clear for Maryland basketball. But that's all we have for today. Thanks for listening to Locked on Terps. Like, subscribe. We're here every day. And thanks for listening and see you next time.